In this tutorial in PhotoDirector 365, we'd like to introduce you to working with layers. Layers give you the ability to make very complex photos out of simple ones. It allows you to put things one on top of another to make other adjustments that apply only to part of your image. And we'll show you a bit about how layers work on a basic level in this tutorial. So I have this image in my library and I want to work on it as a layer. So to do that, I need to click on the edit button at the very top. That will take me to my layers panel. I only have the one layer and it automatically names whatever I start out with as my background layer. And you notice we have a lock next to it in the layers panel on the left side. That means I can't move it or change it unless I unlock it. So normally what people will do is they will keep the background layer to make sure they don't change it and then they'll duplicate it. We'll show you how to do that. If you want to make the layers panel disappear for a while, you can click on the little triangle on the left side and that will give you more editing room or you can make it reappear this way. Now, if I want to work with more than one picture, here's how I do it. I click on the icon on the upper left corner called Add New Layer. And when I do that, I see that I can add several things. We're going to focus on the four at the bottom. I can add an empty layer and I can also use the Control shift n keyboard combination, or I can add a photo layer from a folder on my file system, from the Photo Browser panel, or from a Photo Background Removal Gallery. We also can add a stock photo that would be from iStock or Getty Images, or I can add one that's simply a solid color. We'll just add a photo layer from our browser here. I'll click on Browser Panel, and let's click on this one of this green bridge. I'll click on that, click on OK, and now I added the photo. The best way I know of to think about a layer is it pretend you have a table and you have physical photographs and you just lay one on top of another. Now that's what we have here. This layer is slightly smaller. The picture in its native format is smaller than the other one so we can see the other one from behind it. Now we can move it with the mouse anywhere we want. We can resize the picture as well and let's do that here. And so we have this bridge. Now it's on layer two. Now when you add a layer, the layers stack one upon another. The top layer is the one that's on top of, physically if you will, the other layers. Now you can reverse that as well, except you can't move the background layer on top of another layer. You have to duplicate it. I'll right click on it to do that and click on duplicate. Now I'm going to turn off the original background by using the eye control on the left side that makes it invisible. But now I can take the background copy and drag it up. And now it's on top of the bridge. Well, it's bigger than the bridge, so I obviously can't see it. But if I want to reverse that, I'll take the bridge and move that to the top. And now it sits on top of my image with a butterfly. So that's how you can move them or make them appear or disappear. You notice we haven't deleted them. You can do that as well but you can make any layer visible or invisible by clicking on that eye icon on the left side. And you can change the stacking order. There are some other things that you can do with layers as well. If I want to take the bridge icon and click on the FX, I click on that, that opens up my some of my properties menus that I have for that particular layer. We'll have a tutorial on that, but for example, I can bevel and emboss that particular picture and now we've made some changes to that layer only. When I'm working with a layer and using the layer properties that I have here, I'll often uncheck the box in the lower left called Preview with All Layers. I'll turn this on. So if I'm going to do some editing, let's say, for example, I want to change something else here. Let's say I want to add a border around it. So I'll click on the border control here, and now I don't have the other layers in the way causing me an, an issue. If I want to see them all again, I'll just click on this, and now I have all of them visible. I can either reset this to start all over again with that particular layer, or if I like the changes I've made, I can click on OK, or I can simply cancel. I just click on Cancel. Uh, we'll save it as the way it was originally. So we have the bridge layer on top of the background copy. Let's add another layer. And we'll take another layer from my photos from the photo browser. Let's take this other bridge and click here. And so once again, we have a third layer. I'll put this in the lower right corner. 
And again, it's hard to tell just looking at it which layer is on top. You have to look at your stacking order on the left side. The other thing you can do is move one and you see now this is behind the, the green bridge. So the green bridge is on the top. If I want to reverse the two, I simply can click and drag. And let's do that. We'll move it up. And now this photograph is on the top layer. It's above the bridge and above the image of the butterflies. You can also group layers. Let's take these two and group them. I'm going to click on my top layer here and I'll click on the group layers option from the pop-up menu. Now it creates a group and it calls it group 1 by default. And if I click on the little arrow in group 1, I see I have that first image. I have the image of this picture on the left. Now if I want to add the bridge, the green bridge, to that same group, I simply click and drag it and move it over here. And you notice it aligns itself a little bit to the right. Now both of these are in group number one. I can actually make the group minimal in size and I still have these two images grouped together. And if I move one, I can move both of them. So I can actually make some changes, not only on the image, but on the group. Let's do a bevel and emboss, and it applied it to both of the images in that group, because now they're treated as one. I'll put a border around them as well. Let's make it a little bit thicker than normal so you can see. And so now, because they're part of a group, I have changed the layer properties of the group and they're together. We'll click on OK and save that. So if I want to break them up from the group, I'll right click on it and I can click on the ungroup layers option at the very bottom and it will ungroup them. Notice what happened. The attributes I had on the group disappeared. Each of them are individually different now as they were before they were grouped together. So that's a way in which you can group and ungroup objects together using this particular feature in the Layers menu. So those are a few things that you can do with layers. There's a lot more. We can do some masking. We can take attributes and change them and apply them to parts of the picture rather than all of the picture. There's a lot of complicated things we'll get into in the future lessons, but this is a basic introduction to what layers are and how to begin to think about using them in PhotoDirector 365.